Hello and welcome to CNBC TV 18's Mumbai Newsroom. I'm Sumera Abdi and you're watching MF Corner. Joining in today, we have one guest but two topics. Ashish Shankar, Managing Director and uh, Chief Executive Officer at Motilal Oswal Private Wealth joins in. who will first talk about how to invest in a scenario of rising bond yields. And later on, we'll also talk about how to invest in this time of global volatility and what should be your portfolio positioning. So, Ashish, thanks very much for joining in. First, let's talk about this scenario where, uh, you know, bond yields are rising. RBI has increased the repo rate by 50 basis points last week. And all indications are that, uh, you know, probably more rate hikes are coming. So is it the time now for investors to look at ramping up their fixed income portfolio? Yeah, first of all, Sumaira, it's uh, always a pleasure to be on your show and talking to your viewers. So yes, you're right. Uh, things have been quite volatile. Uh, rates have been rising. And it's not just uh, put pressure on uh, loans, but it's also put also... Uh, I think it's a good time to review fixed income portfolios and see whether people are rightly positioned. See, what happens typically in a rising interest rate scenario is, is uh, funds which have longer maturities. When I say longer maturities, I'm talking about funds which are more than five years, seven years. They tend to show a negative return or, or lag because as rates rise, bond prices tend to fall. They are inversely correlated. So first of all, I think people need to have a clear understanding of this. Otherwise, what happens is when you look at your portfolios and you see fixed income funds showing negative return, it can lead to panic because we have not been used to fixed income portfolios giving negative returns. The second thing is uh, if you look at the yields, today repo is at 5.9 and our view or estimate is that we will see a peak repo rate of about 6.5, so which means that RBI is not yet done with interest rate hikes. Of course, there is always uh, 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 some ambiguity, uh, reason being that uh, RBI's actions are driven by what global central banks are doing. And if global central banks do change their stance, then RBI will need to be uh, that much adaptive and change accordingly. So that that will determine the course of uh, interest rate hikes over the next uh, six months to a year. But as an investor, what, what you need to do is clearly in this kind of a scenario, ensure that your fixed income investments are aligned with maturities. As I said, typically what happens is when rates rise, your portfolios tend to react negatively in terms of price. So for example, if I have a, period, if I have a horizon of less than one year, you need to align portfolios accordingly. So less than one year, you have liquid funds at the extreme short end, and then you have ultra short term funds the moment you have a time horizon of six months plus. Now, these are very good funds in the shorter term because they also act like floating rate funds. See, what happens in a liquid fund is the maturities keep getting renewed every 15 days or one month. So as rates rise, you will automatically get the benefit of rising rates. Similarly, in an ultra short, what happens is that your maturities get renewed every five to six months. So as the uh, papers mature and new papers are bought and if you are in a rising rate scenario, you, you automatically get the benefit. The moment you have a three year plus horizon, then you need to accordingly have funds which have maturities between three to five years. So I think in a rising interest rate scenario, it's very important to align your portfolio maturities with the underlying uh, funds. And this is a great time to relook at your portfolio and see whether you are adequately positioned. Remember, just a year back, uh, yields were about 1% lower. And at that point in time, the concern was whether clients are beating inflation. Uh, I mean, you had very, very low rates. If you remember, bank deposits were between 4 to 5, 5.5%, even at the long end. And inflation typically in India runs anywhere between 5 to 6%. So we were actually getting a negative, negative real return. But today, yields have gone up very sharply. And one can argue that the current inflation rates are probably transitory and they will come down. So fixed income is offering, offering a very, very uh, attractive return today. And for a lot of the investors who probably move towards riskier asset classes because they wanted to make a slightly greater return, it's a good time to relocate their portfolios and see if they can make a higher return without compromising too much on risk. Okay. So, Ashish, uh, then going by what you're saying, what kind of funds and strategies uh, would work well? Is it better right now to stick to uh, you know, uh, the debt funds which are on the shorter side, you know, maturity is up to three years. Right. That's a very, very good question, Sumaira. So uh, typically, like I mentioned, in a rising interest rate scenario, if you have funds with very high maturity, 
uh, you tend to get negative returns and the reason for that is very simple uh, bond prices are negatively correlated with interest rates so when interest rates rise bond prices fall and the longer the maturity the prices of bonds fall more so that is one one point the second point uh, uh, sumera is also to see where the which maturity the return is the most attractive so what has happened let's try and study what is currently happened in markets as repo rates have gone up to 5.9 percent the one-year government security currently is yielding seven percent uh, the five-year government security is re yielding close to 7.3 percent and the 10-year is yielding between 7.4 to 7.5 so really the market is not giving you any premium to increase your maturities beyond a point see typically what happens is that the longer you lock in your money you want higher returns because the longer you lock in your money the risk risk increases however today market is not offering you that uh, risk adjusted return reason being that people expect longer term inflation will come off so that is the reason the longer end or the 10 year paper has not moved as much as the short term papers so we believe you one should do two things in a fixed income portfolios first of all you should match your portfolio with the underlying maturity that you expect so if you have shorter term money anything below three months you should not look beyond liquid funds and liquid funds are also offering very very good returns they are closer to five and a half percent net net uh, yield to maturity the moment you have uh, a horizon of three months to a year you could start looking at ultra short term funds even arbitrage funds are now giving higher returns because the rollover spreads have increased in arbitrage funds to closer to six percent and arbitrage funds offer you a tax advantage as well the taxation is more like equity funds now for longer term investors people who have a horizon of three years uh, and beyond where you get uh, indexation and superior tax uh, efficiencies when you invest in mutual funds for for those investors currently we are advising them to invest in funds with a close to a five year maturity uh, as i said the difference between a five year bond and a 10 year bond today the yield difference is not much it is 10 to 15 basis points so going to 10 year maturity is not offering you that risk return benefit so a five year target maturity fund is what we are recommending what happens in a target maturity fund it's important to understand that if you invest today the average maturity of the fund will be five years and after three four years when you probably need your need liquidity or when you need your money back at that point in time the portfolio maturity will be closer to one or two years so you not only accrue the underlying net net yield which currently is closer to 7.1 7.2 you also can end up making a little extra return because by the time you cross three years the maturity of this fund comes down to about one and a half years and the one and a half year yield is lower so you get a slight capital gain as well so this is what we are recommending sumera and other than that there are other options available in the market like ncds bonds perpetual bonds these are all yielding higher returns but but uh, if you look at from a tax efficiency point of view, probably these uh, mutual funds, targeted maturity funds offer you the best uh, 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 bang for your buck. Okay. Uh, so, Ashish, by, uh, you know, when can we expect uh, that uh, debt funds will start giving returns and what might be a range to work with? Right. So, uh, as I said, uh, you know, this, this rate hike cycle, we believe will be a little shallow, shallow in the sense that uh, if we are projecting the terminal repo rate to uh, uh, top out at six and a half percent then we are talking about another 0.6 percent which can happen as quickly as the next uh, three to four months so i think the next three to four months offers investors a great opportunity to lock in their yields from a three to five year uh, point of view and uh, uh, i do believe that even though in the last one year some of the longer term funds debt funds in client portfolios may have given flat or maybe even marginally negative returns will start accruing at a faster pace so next one year i pres I, I expect debt funds to give uh, much much higher returns than what we have seen in the next in the last uh, two two to three years so really the next three months will will give you an opportunity to lock in uh, much much higher higher yields so it's a great time again i'm reiterating that it's a great time to review your fixed income portfolios and ensure that uh, you are you are adequately allocated uh, because a lot of the investments you might have made in the last two to three years or or maybe three years back 
may have become long term uh, in terms of the tax treatment and it may be a good time to relook at your portfolio and realign it with with much higher yields so if you look at the net ytms uh, from a 3 year plus point of view they are upwards of 7% so like i explained if you put it in target maturity funds you not only make the 7% accrual but you could end up making 0.2 to 0.3% extra because of the roll down effect so 7.3 to 7.5% is is uh, something that uh, you could you could expect in longer term debt funds if you if you position your portfolio uh, appropriately and finally and mind you, yes no no i said mind you and these are extremely high quality funds mm. so there is absolutely no credit risk i'm talking about a 5 year Five year target maturity guild fund which can give you seven plus today. Okay. And finally, any practical tips that you want to share about building or bolstering the debt portfolio? Yes, so uh, uh, I think uh, one of the things is to ignore the noise. I mean, there is a lot of noise. If you actually uh, look at the uh, news today, uh, you hear a lot of uh, uh, conflicting uh, news. I mean, you have uh, some geopolitical tensions happening around the globe. Uh, you have all the large central banks trying to raise rates uh, at the same time there is talk of recession and there is talk of uh, oil prices going up so a lot of this news flow can be quite uh, contradictory because on one side if you if you if you feel that the world is going to head into a recession you cannot have higher oil prices at the same time so if you read a lot and if you listen to the news i think it can be very conflicting instead of that i would say that focus on you should focus on your own portfolio you should look at what is the maturity of the underlying funds that you have in your portfolio and accordingly allocate uh, capital and if you allocate capital accordingly i don't think that over the next 3 to 5 years you should have a problem in terms of returns or and and the volatility will gradually abate so near term i expect a lot of volatility but uh, i do believe that the volatility will gradually abate over the next 5 to 6 months and this next 3 months you must use this opportunity to lock in attractive returns in your fixed income portfolio okay ashish stay on with us we're going to take a quick break uh, we'll come back with ashish in a bit and we'll talk about uh, you know how to better prepare yourselves in the face of this global volatility stay tuned Hi, welcome back. Uh, with us, we have Ashish Shankar, who's the MD and CEO of Motilal Oswal Private Wealth, and uh, we've spoken about uh, basically uh, how to invest in a scenario of rising bond yields. And the other thing that investors w- should keep on their radar is basically how they and their portfolios will be affected by the global volatility. So, uh, Ashish, the first thing is that you know, should investors prepare for further incremental volatility in the global markets? Yes, uh, so Mera, I do believe that uh, we will see a lot of volatility in the months ahead, and uh, the reason is there are various factors as, at play. Uh, the biggest uh, central banks in the world are trying to tame inflation by rising by raising interest rates. If you look at US, I mean the home loan rates of US are very similar to what they are in India, and uh, some of these economies are already in a recession or heading for a much uh, slower uh, period of growth. Uh, at the same time the geopolitical tension around europe is not helping it is putting pressure on oil and gas prices so this is a classic uh, setup for uh, heightened volatility so first uh, investors should expect volatility i think half uh, the the challenge is uh, expecting and actually if you expect that there is going to be heightened volatility then you can start addressing how your portfolio should be position so i do expect a lot of volatility over the next 3 to 4, four months on global factors and certain india specific factors as well as we also uh, head to much higher rates from a policy point of view okay so ashish portfolio wise then what kind of changes are recommended both in terms of you know capital protection and generating returns right i think uh, these uh, are periods good periods to actually relook at uh, one's uh, investment charter i mean we normally recommend that for any portfolio you should actually uh, build a charter which tells you what is your longer term return objective and accordingly what should be your asset allocation between fixed income equity gold or international investing and and once you get a hang on how the portfolio should be allocated like for example if there is a conservative investor and uh, he or she 
uh, wants to have 70% in fixed income and 30% in, uh, um, let's say, riskier uh, asset classes, then you must revisit that and ensure that you are closer to the desired asset allocation. I do believe that a lot of people had strayed away from fixed income and probably started taking higher exposure into risky asset classes because the interest rates were lower. But now with yields being attractive, I think it's a, it's a great time to relook at the asset allocation and ensure that it is in line. So I would say that ignore the near term noise, uh, prepare for volatility, but at the same time, you should stay focused on the longer term picture as even fixed income is offering very, very good yields today. So I think getting the asset allocation right and, you know, positioning it as per your longer term objectives is, uh, you know, 80% of the battle won during a volatility. But generally, uh, Ashish, is it time to be more conservative or is it time to uh, maybe show a little bit of aggression portfolio-wise? I think it's a time to be a little conservative and it also depends on the investor's temperament, uh, right? Uh, probably risk appetites had gone up over the last uh, year or so because fixed income was not yielding too much return. But for people who are, let's say, who cannot stomach volatility, I think it's time to be conservative because fixed income is also offering you good returns. Uh, so that would be my uh, advice. Okay. Uh, another issue, Ashish, how can uh, investors hedge their portfolios against this, uh, you know, two key risks? One is volatility and the other being inflation. Yeah, so uh, two, two approaches to hedging volatility. The, the, the time-tested approach is to have a multi-asset portfolio, which means that do not be over allocated to any asset class, right? So you have Indian equities, you have international equities, you have fixed income and you have gold. Typically, we we, we, we recommend that you have uh, some exposure to each, each asset class. I mean, gold obviously is a classical hedge against volatility or it is a classical hedge against uh, any geopolitical risk. It tends to do reasonably well when equity or risk asset classes don't do well. So I think getting getting your allocation to multi-asset classes itself is a is a hedge against volatility. In fact, uh, we run an equal weighted portfolio to each of these asset classes: international equity, domestic equity, fixed income, and and uh, gold. And we we rebalance it every year. So one is having a uh, exposure to all these asset classes and rebalancing it at a regular basis. That itself is a hedge against volatility. Second, at a portfolio level, one needs to ensure that you are you are rightly allocated. Like we discussed fixed income at length uh, as to how investors should position their portfolios just matching maturities with the underlying products itself is a hedge because you end up getting a return that you know your your uh, the, the portfolios are positioned in terms of net ytm similarly in equities i think it's a, it's a it's a it's a great time to be in high quality strategies uh, and ensure that the portfolio is allocated in high quality uh, uh, stocks and or mutual funds or whatever product product works for you so i think having both these in place gives you a good cushion against uh, any any global volatility ashish thank you very much for joining in uh, to talk about uh, both of these interesting topics and very uh, timely i must say too so thanks very much indeed with that we're going to wind up on this edition of mf corner do stay tuned the theme of closing bell joins you next